Welcome to part two of the SQLite database tutorial for Xcode. In this part, I'll show you how to add the database we created in the last tutorial to an Xcode project. And I'll show you how to use that database, how to add, update, view, and delete information from it. A link to the previous tutorial and a zip file of the Xcode project being used in this tutorial will be provided in the description below. I've included the zip file so you don't need to worry about typing down any of the code. Just open the project and copy and paste the code you need. All right, let's get started. You'll notice that I just dragged and dropped um, this file right in here. I'm not going to do it now, um, but I drag and dropped it right in there. And actually, here, I will do that now. And I selected copy and Select it, add the targets, and hit finish. And that populate. I'm not going to do that right now because I've already done it, but if I hit finish, it would just copy it there and it would look something like that. Nothing special. Um, but then you're going to go, you're going to click on the two targets right here, and you're going to scroll down. Sorry, I might have to bring this up. You're going to scroll down to your linked frameworks and libraries. You're going to hit the plus sign here. Do a little search for SQL, and you get these two pop up. You want the one that's 3.0, okay? So lib SQL light 3.0.dylib, all right? And that loads everything you need. Now you can, um, and just to clarify here, all I have is a, I created a single view Xcode project, right? Like I said, this is not a tutorial on how to build a project, so if you need to know how to do that, go watch one of my other tutorials. Um, also, like I said, this I just want to focus on the database features here. So again, I'm including this project for you. I'm, I'm assuming you already know how to create some text fields and some labels and some buttons. Um, if not, like I said, go ahead and view one of my older tutorials. I have tutorials based on that. Um, all I did here, though, is um, create some text fields, some labels, and some buttons. Um, created IB actions for these buttons. And um, then let's take a look in our view controller. Um, you see I have my uh, IB actions here, right? And um, have some outlets for the text fields and for the uh, um, labels. Um, I also, this is important. You need to import SQLite3.h that gives you um, access to all the SQLite functions that we're going to use in our .m file. And I'll, I'll show you that next. So let's go over what's important in here. Okay. So one thing I did in here is I created a variable that is um, kind of connected to our .db file. So it's my DB. Um, and actually, if this was capital keep that capital. Um, I guess I had uh, at one point lower, made this lowercase. Um, but whatever this file is here, make this correlate to that, right? Um, first thing I want to show you in here besides this um, class variable myDB is that there's two important helper methods for moving the location of the database to an appropriate location and for finding the correct path to the database file. And they're down at the bottom here. There's one called get writable db path and create editable copy of database if needed. These will get called first um, before you do anything else. It copies the database to um, a location within the app that it can then be used um, for editing and writing to. Uh, and the same thing with this path is needed. Otherwise, it'll look for a path to the um, uh, read-only copy of the database. Okay, So that's important that these are in here. Like I said, I'm giving you all this code, so you don't need to write this down right now. Um, so let's take a look. So, so basically, I'm going to show you the different methods in here. Um, I have one for viewing data that's in your database, one for deleting data. Um, information that's in your database, one for adding information to the database, and then one for updating information 
in the database, okay? Um, like I said, so each of them has kind of a call here to the create editable copy of the database um, and then gets the file path. Now, I separate these out. You could have made this, um, you could have got had these called in the view did load and make this file path a class variable. Um, that's your decision when you go ahead and implement these. Um, but I think I, what I did is I actually have each of these called in each method just so that if you want to copy and paste this into a project and you only want it that one method, you have all the code you need. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so anyway, what's going on here in, in each of these is you'll notice you have calls to SQL Lite 3 and they've each of these methods, the save, delete, update, um, does sort of the same thing. It opens the database, right? Um, so that, that open method takes a couple parameters, um, the database name, the file path, um, and then you create an SQL statement, which basically says what you're going to do. We're going to insert into users, uh, username and email, um, and then we go ahead and do this, uh, what's called prepare statement, and we, you know, these are kind of placeholders for the actual values that are going to be um, inserted in there. And this is where we go ahead and insert it. The U and the E are these variables right here, um, which are the username text field and the email text field. And then we go ahead and um, step through the actual SQL statement. And then we finalize it to make it complete. And then when we're all done, we close the database. And that's basically the step that we go through in each of these. Um, you'll notice in we do the same thing in the update. Um, I do a lot of uh, connecting of strings together. So I make these little strings here, and then I use these little variables to insert them where needed, and then use the string with format method. Um, hopefully you're familiar with that. I, I believe I have a, a tutorial showing you how to do that. Basically what this allows us to do is combine a bunch of strings together, and all these strings combined will make what's our, what is our SQL statement which is basically putting this all together to say, yep, we're going to update the user table. We're going to set the username to user. We're going to set the email to the email. And we're going to set the ID to whatever we choose the ID to be. And then we just kind of string these along here. Um, so when you're all done and we run this, you'll see there's nothing in it yet. Let's put in a couple samples. Say James, email make up an email james at aol.com save it uh, it's view and there it is i just made this simple little label view here that just adds on if we need to so let's do another one let's say timmy at timmy at aol.com save and view and now so that's saved in there as well um let's say you know what and this these are the ids related to that um, field in the table. So if I wanted to update this, uh, let's say nine in here, let's update it, we'll put nine in there and we'll say, all right, let's update um, this field here. We're gonna, we can go in here and say, you know, his name wasn't James, it was uh, um, Albert. I'm sorry, nine, update. There you go. Now that says Albert now. Makes sense? Um, then we could just keep adding people here. So now you have another one. Um, so let's say I wanted to delete Albert, right? So if nine's already in there, I'll just leave it up there in there. We'll say delete view. Now he's gone. All right, so this is fully functional. I hope this helps you. All right, um, let me know if you need any clarification on anything. Leave some comments. I'd be glad to make a follow-up video. Thanks.